Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and I'm going to talk to you today about Tokugawa Iyasu and I'm going to ask you how good was it? Now I mean that in two ways, how technically good was he as a military leader and how good was he as a morale, as a person and his morale. Now uh, if you want, I'm doing this to support my new book, The Book of Bushido, it's got loads of stuff in there about this topic and about this subject so please get yourself a copy of that, there'll be a link pinned. But uh, I am actually doing this um, video for this book which is Shogun. This is for Tuttle. Tuttle sent me this book and it's Shogun The Life of Tokugawa Yasu and I've enjoyed it, I've read it. Um, the worst thing that has to be said about it is, um, it, it's not that it's out of date but um, Stephen Turnbull says there might be a few little bits that have been adjusted since this book first came out and we know a bit more. But on the whole, it, so, you know, it tells you about Tokugawa Iyasu. But um, probably Nick from The Shogunate would give you a better review. But have a look for The Shogunate, The Life of Tokugawa Iyasu and see what you think. See if you fancy it. So let's get into the actual video. Right. Is Tokugawa Iyasu any good? Let's first start of all, is he a good commander? Now, is it that Tokugawa Yasu was really good and he got to where he was because he was an awesome commander? Or was he third rate as a commander? Now, I'm asking you this, guys, and I want your opinions on this. Is because Japan was in, like, small kingdoms and small little factions. And what you find, and it, the, the government was sort of on its... Is it working? Is it not? There's a lot to go into that and discuss with that. And as I say, visit the Shogunate's channel for his Sengoku period. But on the whole, Nobunaga, Oda Nobunaga from a small part of the country, just blitzed the country and formed it into a massive cohesion, almost bringing it fully together. So Nobunaga is the one who really laid the foundations, but he was killed by one of his own men. So the question becomes is, is Tokugawa Yasu's success based off Nobunaga? Because then... You get uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa doesn't even beat Toyotomi Hideyoshi, which is he's a peasant. He's like a peasant who's gone up to sort of the heights of, um, you know, through his intellect and through his ability. So he he doesn't do what Nobunaga does. He doesn't do what Tokugawa, uh, what um, Hideyoshi does. And then when Hideyoshi dies of natural causes, he takes over then at the last minute. And some people say that it's his patience that pays out. Or is he an opportunist? So is he this great tactician that finds the right time? Or was he an opportunist who waited for the time because he couldn't actually pull off what he wanted to pull off that was take control of the country? That question in itself is probably worth the series of videos. But what do you think below? But let's go to the second question, is how, which is the main question of this video, is how good was Tokugawa Yasu? So I went to the post office today. And the lady behind the counter, we were talking about what kids are into now. And she said, surprisingly, her kids, who I assume between 10 and 15, said really into World War One and World War Two, And they love reading about Adolf Hitler. And she said, everybody looks at them like they're crazy. And she says, but as a mother, what should I do? It's still history. It's still what we should know. You shouldn't not learn about history. But it's like, oh, they, they read Adolf Hitler. Oh, what can I do? Because we're in such a weird world now where it's like, can you or can you not read about this dictator? So, um... But this sparked, I said to her, I said, but nobody would have a go at you if they read Genghis Khan. And Genghis Khan was probably worse than Adolf Hitler uh, in the sense that, so Adolf Hitler has mechanised warfare across all of Europe and into outside of Europe. Genghis Khan is a thousand years before, and well, you know, almost, and he is basically with some horses. And they were doing horrific things. The Mongols were absolutely, that's the Chinese what the Mongols were doing. That's the Japanese. And so... But if you say to someone, oh, I studied Genghis Khan, people are like, okay, well, tell me about that. But if you say, I study Adolf Hitler, people are like, mm, what are you doing? So then we get to the Tokugawa Ieyasu. So here's a conundrum for you. Not the countdown conundrum type, just the normal conundrum type for British fans. So you are, there is a room with 10 men in it. And, and sorry, 10 men lined up and a few of you on this side. So it's probably 12 or 13 people in the room, but there's 10 men over there. And the person, or one person next to you just shoots one of them. Individual, he's got a far, he's a father, he's got children, shoots him in the kneecaps and blows his head off, yeah? Are you happy with this man? He goes on the run from the police, just does it. Or this man shoots all 10 of them, just killing them, just murdering them. Is he a good man? Now, what if you put that up into percentages? He kills a thousand people. You watch, you're, you're sat there, you're chained up and you watch somebody slaughtering a thousand people and you think, is he a good man? 
the man who killed the one man, or if he killed a thousand men, does it make him good or bad? Now, of course, in medieval times, we know warfare happened and murder happened. But Tokugawa Ieyasu, as has been correctly and greatly done by Nick from the Shogun, who talked about the numbers of dead in the second um, Sengoku period, whether it goes into the millions or not. To me, it sort of becomes redundant after 100,000 people. You're like... You know, even though if you look at the Sengoku period, we're talking millions of people died with the invasion of Korea, pestilence, war. From the decisions of a few individual people comes hundreds of thousands, if not millions of deaths. It's the same as Adolf Hitler. From the decisions of a few come millions of deaths. So the idea is that how good a person was Tokugawa Ieyasu? Now, he may have been responsible for 50,000 people dying, 100,000 people dying. We, we don't actually really know, but we can have guesses at it. And they're just random guesses. But my point being is, it's not that it was the life and it's inevitable. It's his decisions that brought about death. So let's look at um, the siege of Osaka. However, tens of thousands of people died because he wanted to take control of Toyotomi Hideyoshi's heirs. So you're like, his decision to be the ruler of Japan caused thousands of people to be murdered, slaughtered, killed, their eyes gouged out, their jaws chopped off, because he said, I want to be in control. I want that. I want what they've got. So it's the same as one man walking up to another man and shooting him in the face and taking his wallet and saying, I want that. Would you applaud that as good moral behaviour? So it... This is why we probably have the ideas of, you know, the sort of semi-mythological idea of Kusunoki Masashige. Kusunoki Masashige is an absolute historical figure. We have um, almost contemporary texts talking about him with the Taiheiki and different variations of the Taiheiki not far after his death. But we find that the further along you go from the some random Taiheikis, the more godlike Kusunoki comes to the point where World War II happens, it's Kusunoki Masashige, the most loyal man in the world, he's, you know, does everything, he's amazing, same as King Arthur whether he was a historical figure or not did he become about and he was just this awesome king, do we look for these things because they don't actually exist in reality or do people, are is there any good rulers in reality where they were in a position of rulership, so Tokugawa Ieyasu was in a position of rulership and he said I'm going to benefit these people. So I, I've struggled with this question. Is Does Tokugawa... Do, Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Tokugawa Yasu... If, did, did any of them benefit the nation of Japan? Now, it was said that they did because they unified Japan and stopped it going to war. But the wars that happened before they unified it were in the 1,000 casualties, two, three, four thousand. 4,000. You know, Nick will go into that more. But what I'm saying is it's not in the vast casualties. But as they decide to make their choices to make a better world, the casualties jump up to 100,000, 200,000, 500,000. So at which point of mass slaughter does the world become better? Do you see what I mean? So I... What I'm trying to do at the minute is there are plenty of channels out there that will tell you these tidbits of information on this date they did this and this did this and this moved here. But what I'm asking you to do is give you that different dimension where it's, let's think about this. How good a commander was he? Genghis Khan went from nothing to taking over the Golden Horde and creating the Golden Horde and pretty much taking over most of the world. It's only his, you know, sort of like untimely death, if you like, that got rid of him and it was like... Oh, was it a timely death? I think he's ill, isn't it? So basically, it's like he did it off his own back. But did Tokugawa Iyasu stand on the shoulder of giants, be an opportunity? I was not really a nice person anyway. And, you know, and there's plenty of stories of him, you know, having people killed and all this, you know, and all that sort of stuff. He even kills his own wife and his own eldest son because they're not appropriate people say oh, it's to you know for nobunaga it's to solidify but at the end of the day he slots his wife doesn't protect his wife and go against so it's just like yeah let's get rid of her and let's get rid of my eldest son because he's a bit of a wild card and uh, that appeases this political gain and let's crack on you know and he has people killed for this and like his son is executed and all this sort of stuff so we have to ask these questions so what i'm trying to do to you for you guys is to give you those little bit of open questions and open videos that are not restricted in the say can sense of this is what happened this isn't and i want you to think about it but also guys if you do me a favor can you link this video in different places let's see if we can push this channel around a bit so do take a minute to link it in different places and if you're a youtuber 
please take up this topic and have a have a go. There's no answers in this video. I'm not telling you any answers. What I'm doing is asking for you to let's discuss this topic. Was Tokugawayasu good or not in both senses? So if you're interested in his life, it's there. I'm doing that for Tuttle, so hopefully it's had enough screen time. But help support me, get yourself a copy of the book of Shido. And I talk about this general topic in there. So let me know what you think in the comments below.